what is the standard deviation, why should you care, and how we use it in finance. Plus, at the end of the video, we'll see how to calculate it. This is the topic of today, so let's get started. Okay, simply put, the standard deviation measures how spread or scattered a series of data is with respect to its own average. Now, what does it mean in actual English? Let's say that with an example. Imagine that you have to go to the post office. This is a map of where you live. This is your house and there are two post offices nearby, post office A and post office B. They are both equally close to where you live. And you know that the average waiting time for both is exactly 15 minutes. Now, you may think that you are indifferent between the two, but that will change if I told you that we can observe the waiting time of the respective last 10 customers for both post offices. So let's have a look at that. In post office A, as you can see from this table, the last 10 customers have waited around or close to 15 minutes each. Customer 1 waited 12 minutes. Customer number 5 waited exactly 15 minutes. Customer 7 was a bit unlucky and they waited 20 minutes and so on and so forth. In post office B instead, the distribution looks very different. So you know that if you go there, you may be very lucky and wait just one minute or two minutes, or you could wait up to 50 minutes and spend more than an hour on this errand, which is not something that you probably look forward to. So which one of these two data sets will have the smaller standard deviation? Post office A has the lowest standard deviation because the waiting times are more concentrated around the average. For post office A, we have an average waiting time of 15 minutes with a standard deviation of 3 minutes. And for post office B, we have an average waiting time of 15 minutes with a standard deviation of 20 minutes. So now you start to understand why we need it. It helps us better describe the distribution so that we can make more informed decisions because the average is not enough. And the standard deviation helps us visualize how far from that average we might be. Having full information on the average waiting time and the standard deviation, most people would choose to go to post office A because as humans, normally we don't like a lot of uncertainty, but it does depend on each person's risk tolerance. Let's now visualize the concept. In this first graph I'm showing you, the individual waiting times which are represented by the dots and how they compare with respect to their average, which is the straight line that you can see here. This is for post office A and as you can see they are pretty close. Let's now see the waiting times for post office B. You can immediately see that there is more variability around the average and this concept is captured by the standard deviation. In finance, we use the standard deviation to understand the risk and the potential upside of an investment. Let's pick one stock. For this example, I chose Apple. And let's look at the monthly returns over the past five years. In Excel, I can easily calculate the average by using the average function and selecting all my series with the keyboard shortcut shift Control arrow down. This is 2.8%. For the standard deviation, start typing stdev and it will be the first one. Select again the same series and you will see that the result is 8.5%. If returns are normally distributed and we're gonna see what that means in a second, I can use these two numbers, the average and the standard deviation to understand more about the distribution of returns and to make educated guesses on what could happen to the stock in the future. Let's start by plotting the normal distribution. If you've never seen this, don't panic. This is called a normal distribution and you have to visualize it in this orthogonal space where we have probabilities on the vertical axis and values, in our case returns, on the horizontal axis. The grey area under the bell represents probabilities associated with different monthly returns. The normal distribution is centered around the average, which in statistics we denote with the Greek letter mo. For Apple, this is 2.8%, as we previously calculated. Although returns are not exactly normal, they actually look like this, as you can see they are a bit skewed. They tend to be shaped almost normally if we have enough data points. In general, we approximate their distribution to the normal because of its symmetrical properties and also because the normal happens to fit a lot of natural phenomena in real life. In the normal distribution, 68% of the area under the bell is within one standard deviation of the average and 95% of the area is within two standard deviations of the average. The standard deviation here is denoted with the Greek letter sigma. So in our example, we can estimate that with a 68% probability, returns will be between minus 5.7% and 11.3%. That is because 2.8, which is the average, minus 8.5, which is the standard deviation, is exactly equal to minus 5.7 and 2.8 plus 8.5 is equal to 11.3. We can even go further and say that with 95% probability, 
monthly returns will be between minus 14.2% and 19.7% because 2.8% minus 2 times 8.5 is equal to minus 14.2. Let's now see how to calculate it. I will use a simple example with a series of three numbers only to make it easier to understand. So we have these three numbers, 20, 45, and 17. The average is equal to the sum of these three numbers divided by how many elements we have in the series. So we get 27. To calculate the standard deviation, we first subtract the average from each number in our series. So we do 20 minus 27, 45 minus 27, and 17 minus 27. Then we raise this to the power of 2, and then we sum them. Afterwards, we divide by the number of elements in our series, which is 3, and finally, we take the square root of all this. According to my calculation, this should be equal to 12.8. Try to do the calculation yourself and let me know in the comments if I got it wrong. I hope that the concept of standard deviation is a little bit more clear to you and that you found this video useful. I thank you so much for watching this part and I'll see you next week.